like to call this meeting to order for the Committee of the Whole uh, for Barnegat Township Board of Education for September 27th. Um, roll call. Uh, Ms. Cherney? Here. Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Iamonte? Here. Ms. Levy? Here. Mr. Moore? Mr. Quelch? Here. Mr. Zawicki? Ms. Tarnowski? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Okay. Uh, Mr. Quelch, please. Uh, updates on finance BNG. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, finance BNG met on uh, September 21st. Uh, we started a meeting off going over financials and our bills list and items like that. And uh, our financials looks pretty stable as of right now, which is good. Um, I'm gonna leave off here. You're gonna talk about the demolition, right? For the other building, I'm sure. Leave that off. So <clears throat> we did finally complete the bathrooms at the Dumphy School. That is all done over there. So that whole project is complete. Um, just a couple little tiny things we're waiting for from the from the township. And solar um, Brackman finally is up and running. So we're waiting on just a certification and final completion. Uh, and we'll be good to go finally on that solar project will be completely done. Um, contractor has a few little punch list items to take care of, but other than that, it's pretty complete. Um, still going on at the Brackman School is the air handler, so that's going well, and that school will be complete hopefully before the heat season starts up. And that's really about all I have going on right now in the district. Thank you. Any questions on finance, BNG? Uh, Mr. Hickey, would you please update on education committee? Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. So first and foremost, we spent the uh, beginning of the committee discussing in depth the uh, action plan for the health and PE curriculum that we alluded to last month when we delayed the vote. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, the curriculum department is going to distribute the draft curriculum community wide um, so everybody can get a handle on what that looks like. Um, and then we are going to conduct one last community discussion night which should be a two-way conversation about what's in the curriculum. And what we're really looking for is specific feedback on items within the curriculum that may be up for revision or um, to discuss where people might have issues and that way we can work through them and come up with a better path forward for the curriculum. We're also gonna uh, focus on specificity and give some example lesson plans and talk a little bit about some scripts um, essentially that um, may be used in the classroom. Uh, we're going to review the community feedback at Education Committee in October, um, and then the curriculum will get revised if required, and then we will complete the vote to pass the curriculum no later than October to avoid any... I thought it said December. No, it's October. You're going to vote in October? I believe so, yeah. If, if it warrants it. So if we get to the committee, and we find that there's still issues or people still want to delay the vote. But as of right now, I don't see any reason why we can go from October 13th education committee and vote on it at the October board meeting. 
questions yet? Uh, I got a couple more items. Go we can discuss this item nope, now. Nope. Okay. So number two, we uh, reviewed the curriculum department three year plan. Um, this is the vehicle that we used to ensure strategic alignment from our strategic plan, um, basically coming from the five year plan down to annual and um, three year goals and action plans that we plan to put into place. So if you reviewed your agenda, you'll be able to see kind of what the next three years for education committee looks like. We also reviewed the district faculty mentoring plan. Um, which is a requirement for teachers that um, are trying to attain tenure here. And it's for the new teachers to be paired up with a senior member and um, get educated on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We also reviewed the district professional development plan to continue to build the capacity of our teachers and their instructional methods. We also approved the district evaluation instruments. And um, I just wanted to say thank you because we also reviewed a donation for a piano for the Donahue School from Mrs. Booth. Any questions? Okay. Do we have that action plan for, do we have that curriculum given to the parents yet? Speaking to the mic, I can't hear. Okay. Do we have that action plan given to the parents yet? Um, so that's kind of where we're putting it out right now. And it's then being printed out now. Not printed out, but this is, we agreed on it for an education committee. And then I asked specifically if any of the board members and the committee had an issue with the action plan. Everybody no, said no, it was not issue. Go. Just wondering when when will the parents get it? It, uh, it will go out at the beginning of next week. We figured about two weeks before the information night for people to have a chance to review it. So they'll have like about two weeks to review. Yeah. How, how much, how big is it? Uh, off the top of my head, I, I don't know, but it's it's three different grades that it impacts, second, fifth, and eighth, and it's uh, specific to those standards. So um, usually the curriculum documents are fairly robust, but I don't think it's it's unmanageable with that amount of time. And do we have a date on the parent information night? Uh, Thursday, October 13th or 14th? Is it the... 13th. 13th? I don't have the date. Thursday the 13th. So that's here? Uh, yeah, that'll be at the high school. Now that's just to go back and forth with information and if we have to revise anything, modify anything, we do it after that. And we'll be voting, we'll be voting in October. The October mm -hmm. board meeting, essentially. If we have time. I mean, if, it, if we get pinned up with a ton of changes or whatever, then we can always punt that potentially to November, but I mean, we'll play it by ear and see how much feedback we get. Um, what we're hoping for is specific feedback about specific line items, if they're less like revisions, like this isn't like, I think one of your biggest concerns was vagueness, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's not specific enough or there's not enough specificity there, then I would come prepared to discuss what more specific, like it, once you read the language and then say, okay, well, instead of this, say X, Y, or Z. And I think that's the kind of specificity we want from all parents or community stakeholders. So I was told that teachers aren't robots and you don't want scripts. So now we're going to try to stick. Yeah, to I mean, because we're asking for specificity. Our committee, and specifically yourself, was asking for specificity yes. at the last board meeting and at the last committee meeting. But usually the, the argument I get back is that teachers aren't robots and you don't want to so they're not, script. They're not so, mandated scripts, but they're uh, basically examples of sample, like, sample lesson plans. I think that was said. Sample lesson plans. Sample on all activities. the controversial issues in each grade. No, I, I just want to make well. sure that it so, is so just transparent. The, just to start beginning. So the curriculum documents are consistent of the specific standards that need to be addressed. Um, so we're going to share out those curriculum documents with the standards. Um, with the standards and then potentially some samples and things like that so people can get an idea of what it looks like. Um, but really the feedback, uh, the, the nature of those two information nights that we had, the idea was for people, for the community members to convey um, how they interpret the standards um, so that when they come across in teacher practice, they're reflective of what the community was looking for. Um, so now that we actually have the curriculum documents updated, um, they have the standards outlined in them. Uh, what we'd be looking for now is if there is some uh, verbiage or something in there that, like if, if people feel is either 
there's a different way to do it or a better way, that'll be the feedback that we can get at that point. Um, and then we'll go from there. I mean, that's- So if there's verbiage in there that we don't like, but it's part of a standard, how do we get rid of it? So you can't, you can't vote down something that's specifically coming from the state as far as standards that we have to include in there. Um, those documents will basically bring those standards to life a little bit. And if there's a way that we can revamp the way that those standards are coming to life, if you will, then that would be the feedback that we can get. But we can't alter the standards that we get specifically from the state. Those have to come is how we convey those, which is, again, the nature of what those two nights were about. This is the definition from the state. You know, how do we feel is the most appropriate way to convey that to our children, to our students. But he used, you used the keyword script. Yeah, sample lesson plans or sample scripts that teachers may use in the classroom, right? Because people are asking for specificity. Without that specificity, it seems like there's a loss of trust or confidence in the specific teachers that will be teaching this curriculum. And I do want to avoid that appearance that the board isn't willing to pass the curriculum in a timely manner, specifically prior to the election, because I've been pointed out for that. So I don't, I'm not scared of that. For me, it's more about getting it done in a timely manner. So we're not penalized during our QSAC review year next year, which is really important for us to pass that. The first time we passed it in 13 years, and I'd like to continue that trend. So delaying it could cause us to lose points. I'm not ready to do that. Number two. I'm not worried about points. I'm worried about kids. And the state has made specific statements that <clears throat> districts that don't adopt the standards the way they're written, you know, and we've seen, we've seen the article that was all shared with us that we could be at risk as a district for further repercussions from the Department of Education if we don't act on this in a timely manner. So for me, that's what's most important here. Did you guys look into what Southern Regional put through on this? Yeah, and that was one of the items that was specifically said by the state that could incur further further scrutiny or penalty from what they did. Yeah, the take home lessons. Yes. Uh, as far as the script goes, my opinion of the script is more or less, it, it, it can be used by a teacher, but a teacher is not absolutely forced to use it. It's for the class and for a sample for the teacher to use. It's not written in stone and we're not having them become robots because of a script. It's given to you as an extra that you can initiate. It's sort of like an if then. So if this happens, then do this. That's correct. And um, to give them an idea of how to answer sensitive questions, perhaps, um, so that it would not be uh, taken past that line that we don't want or we don't accept them from various teachers. All right. And there were board members that expressed very specific concerns about trusting individual teachers with this. So we want to go through, see these sample lesson plans, see the sample scripts, see what's available to them, and then maybe recommend further training so that individual teachers kind of get this preemptive look at, well, how does, how does the district want it taught to make it mitigate any risk that you might And my, see. excuse me, when you talk about script, you're not, you're not just talking about how to answer a question. We're also talking about a type of activity to be used in the curriculum so that we can have, um, uh, a, a, a method to attach a standard to a bit of activity in the classroom. Which further demonstrates either compliance with the state standards and also meet the community That's desires correct. of teaching this in an acceptable manner. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the Edwards committee met on September 21st. Uh, abatement is complete for all the identified materials by the uh, hazmat teams. Uh, soil conservation approval is received and full demo is supposed to uh, start the week of October 10th uh, and we'll resume then and it's expected to take about three weeks. Any questions on Edwards? Okay. Uh, governance committee met on the 19th. We had the first reading of staff attendance <coughs> staff attendance policy updates. Um, first reading of the revision of virtual and remote instruction policy, uh, which clarifies when remote instruction would count towards the 180 day school year requirement. Uh, 
and that's uh, three days, three consecutive days. It's, uh, it would count. We have the second reading for support staff dress and grooming as well as therapy dogs. Uh, we are voting tonight on the SSDS report and remote learning handbook. Uh, and we will also be discussing the resignation of Michael Moore, a board member who moved out of town. Uh, the board will uh, publicly uh, accept applications and the seat will be held until the January reorganization meeting. Any questions on governance? Yeah, I have one. Um... So we've had four resignations, correct? In the last year and a half or so? Something like that, yeah. And how many of those were due to moves and nothing else? Uh, three. three at least. Three of them, right? Yeah. People moved out of town. Moved out of it's town, like yep. There's some dysfunction. I believe the other person retired. All right. And then the one person that did resign for unsatisfied, like he was unhappy. Yeah. That was, okay, just checking. Okay. Uh, Mr. Aymonte, you have updates on HST? All right, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. All right, let's try that. All right, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. The uh, Health, Safety, and Technology Committee met on uh, September 21st at 1.30 p.m. Uh, in the technology section of the meeting, we discussed that cameras have been installed and will be operational by the end of this week. Also, the 500 uh, Chromebooks were distributed to the seventh and eighth graders with the intent of the students keeping the Chromebooks over the summer. Uh, for the safety, uh, all estimates have been received for the school hardening and are being re uh, reviewed by uh, Mr. Brennan. I, uh, the, uh, also, new ID cards are being prepared to replace the uh, FOBs. The security standard operating procedures have been completed and have been submitted to the attorney for attorney review. Um, also, all guards have completed CPR training and certified in CPR and uh, choking portion, the Heimlich maneuver, and so on. Uh, the, also, we discussed the purchasing of vests for the armed guards um, at that particular meeting. The health portion, uh, we hired a uh, part-time school nurse pending board approval. Uh, also, the purchasing of life vacs. Uh, we discussed that, and that's, that's going to be placed on hold because I want to investigate that further. Uh, I don't know if you folks are aware what, the, what a life back is. Basically, it's an it's instrument that it's recommended to be used as a last resort for somebody choking. Um, I looked at the video. I have some questions about the video. Um, what I would recommend first is that we train people certain people, whoever wants to be trained in the um, lunch area in doing the Heimlich maneuver. Uh, that could easily be done in about 30 minutes. Um, we just have to make it, you know, set up some kind of schedule where we can do that. I'd rather that they be trained in that before we even try to get this uh, instrument. And basically what it is, it's a suction that with a mask, you put it over the person's mouth and supposedly when you pull on it, it, it forms a vacuum and sucks that material out. The only question I have is looking at the video, uh, when they put, you know, as a demonstration, when they put something in that mannequin's mouth, they didn't shove it far enough as far as I'm concerned. They only put it in the mouth. And to me, uh, as a CPR instructor, a uh, child could just cough it out because it's not stuck in the throat. So I'd like to investigate that further before we make it to a motion to uh, to purchase that, but I would rather have the people trained in uh, again in doing the hybrid maneuver for the adult child and infant. Um, and the and that's about all. Oh, the other thing uh, also on the security, uh, the purchasing of vests for the armed guards was discussed. On that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions on HST? Thank you. Uh, personnel committee met on the 22nd. We have three sidebar updates regarding sick day payouts, club advisor, and PD requirements. Um, several new hires uh, being booted on tonight, and then normal transfers. And finally, I'd like to congrat, uh, offer congrats and best wishes to our retirees this month. Any questions on personnel? All right. I'd like a motion to adjourn committee of the whole, please. So moved. Uh, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. 
Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Um, Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zwicky? I'm sorry, Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And, and Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting for the Barnegat Board of Education. Uh, okay. Notice of this meeting has been forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Beacon, tap into Barnegat and placed in the foyer of each Barnegat Township school in the Barnegat Township Municipal, Municipal Building and has been filed with the Barnegat Township Municipal Clerk in conjunction with the Open Public Meetings Act. That will do a roll call. Um, Ms. Cherney? Here. Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Iamonte? Here. Ms. Levy? Here. Mr. Moore? Mr. Quelch? Here. Mr. Zawicki? Ms. Tarnowski? Here. And Mr. O'Brien? Here. All right. We have a quorum. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an agenda addition. Uh, yes, we actually have two changes. Uh, we're going to be removing uh, under the personnel uh, section of the agenda for Q uh, from the personnel section. Um, the agenda voted on by the board during regular session will now reflect the numbering for personnel items four as 4A through 4S. And then we would also like to add an item under governance um, we'd like to add the motion to accept the resignation of board member Mike Moore, Michael Moore, effective September 18th, 2022. Those are the two changes. Okay. I have a motion to approve the additions. Changes? So Second. We still need a second. Oh, second. Sorry. Okay. okay. All right, uh, Ms. Journey? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Imonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Um, Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. Moore? I'm sorry, Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Yes. Right. Motion carries. Okay, can I please have a motion for the approval of the regular session and executive session minutes from the August 30th meeting? So moved. Second. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motion carries. Uh, now I'd like to welcome the new student representative, Sophia Irizarry. Okay, so the next thing that's coming up is going to be homecoming week and um, our trunk or treat. So bonfire is going to be the 13th of October at 7 p.m. I believe it's going to be at the Donahue parking lot again. Um, and then our homecoming game is going to be the night of October 14th. Um, and then lastly, the homecoming dance is going to be Saturday on the 15th from 7 to 10. And then trunk or treat is open to the public. It's gonna be Tuesday, the 25th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's in the Barnegat High School parking lot. And it's basically all of the clubs, sports and departments um, decorate um, trunks and anybody from the local community can come and participate in it. That's all. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Irizarry. Uh, next up is Barnegat uh, Education Association liaison. I'd like to welcome April, April Flory, please. please. Thank you so much. Um, I'd just like to take a minute. The association would like to take a moment to recognize certain staff members who've had over 20 years of experience working here in Barnegat. Uh, I'm just going to list them and apologize for their pronunciation of their last names in advance. Uh, Ms. Denise Puma, Michelle Lutza, Joanne Maritino, Beverly Shaw, Marianne Simpson, Barbara Kessick, Sarah Fish, Jen Hurt, Kim Germano, Teresa Hohenwich, 
Sue Penk, Teresa Lopez, Don Kiefer, Bonnie Harris, Dawn Wright, Donna Herthington, Kevin Ruthven, Dina Arguello. Uh, bear with me one second. Kerry Ramsey, Kim Fuko, Lynn Clementi, Rob Davis, Cheryl Mazza Shimko, Dania Playa, Allison Greco, Jennifer Brennan, Jocelyn Husko Jorgensen, Beth Ann Rapola, Vicki and Derek Rizzo, Mary Beth McCarty, Randy Coveen, Marianne Simpson. The following people have more than 25 years in Barnegat. Peg Zabahonski, Cindy Gallagher, Jill Spain, and Margie Shoka, and Donna Durning. Finally, 30 years in Barnegat, Grace Buck, Lynn Littner, Michelle Cucinata, Patty Noakes, Deanna Bocello, Therese Weiner, Carol Zarillo, Lori Kennedy, Kathy Hill, Mimi Coates. Total 48 staff members with a 1,198 years of dedication and experience in Barnegat. We'd like to just take this moment to thank them all for what they've done and all just keep on doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Latwis for superintendent highlights. All right. Uh, first, I'd like to int uh, introduce Carolyn Johnson, the uh, new supervisor of guidance. Come on up. Exactly. Here. She's been with us a month, but this is her first time doing the upstanders. So let's make her feel welcome. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, again, my name is Carolyn Johnson. I'm the district supervisor of guidance within this district. And today I'm very excited to recognize our wonderful upstanders district wide. The Upstanders program is a wonderful opportunity to recognize and celebrate students district-wide who demonstrate a specific Bengal pride trait. These traits continue to enhance the positive climate in our schools, as well as the home school community partnership that plays an essential role in all of our students' success. This month, our students exemplified benevolence for the B and Bengal pride. We are very excited to present students with a gift card from one of our local restaurants, Dolce's. When you hear your name, please come forward and join board president, Mr. O'Brien and superintendent, Dr. Latwis for your plaque and your gift certificate. Sophia Nieto. Sophia is incredibly kind and her positive energy is contagious. She continues to be a role model for her peers and for her athletic team. She is always willing to help and advocate for others. Leah Costri. Leah is a model student, friend, teammate, and leader. She always takes the time to make sure that she is dependable and respectful. She looks out for her friends and classmates and lifts others up without expecting any acknowledgement in return. Congratulations, Leah. Elizabeth Topoleski. Izzy is extremely gracious, empathetic, and kind-hearted. Her enthusiasm is contagious and she exudes compassion and grace wherever she goes. Lizzie is always willing to volunteer for activities and never shies away from providing a helping hand. Congratulations, Lizzie. Jaden Tagliarini. <laughs> yes. Jaden is a kind, warm-hearted boy who always is helping others. Jaden will go out of his way to make sure that his classmates feel welcome. On the first day of school, a student was upset after not winning a game. When Jaden found out that he won, he shared his prize with the other student, which demonstrated his empathy and compassion for those around them. Congratulations, Jaden. Charlotte Scalise. Charlotte is a very kind girl. And when starting school a few weeks ago, there were a few friends in class who were upset because they missed their moms and dads. Although Charlotte is not able to join us today, we still wanted to recognize her wonderful job. Stanton. <laughs> uh, 
Connor is very compassionate for the well being of others. He is always there to give a hug to a peer who is upset and to make them smile. Connor is the true meaning of caring, helpful, and considerate. Congratulations, Connor. Congratulations, students and parents. Brian. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next I'd like to invite up the Director of Curriculum Instruction. Uh, Jim Barbieri to present the uh, an overview of the strategic plan action plans. While uh, Mr. Barbieri is coming up and getting set up, I'm just going to uh, take a quick second to uh, give a couple shout outs. Uh, first and foremost, on uh, October 7th, uh, we invite everybody to come out to the BHS uh, high school uh, football game. Uh, we're going to be honoring all first responders and veterans that night. So we would definitely encourage everybody to come out and uh, support uh, the team and support uh, those uh, individuals. Um, congratulations to the BHS Marching Bengals on their first place win at the TOB Region 7 Group 2A competition. So that's uh, very exciting. They continue to impress. Um, big thank you to the Barnegat uh, Police Department. The, uh, some of the Barnegat Police Officers, along with Detective Armstrong, met with our new uh, SHIELD program uh, at the high school uh, to work with the students and give them uh, tips for completing the Police Department PT test. Um, a quick uh, shout out to Sue Rogers. Uh, her retirement uh, letter was uh, recognized on tonight's agenda and Sue Rogers has been a staple in this district for many years. Um, as we uh, ironically just honored her last month for her accomplishments with the uh, Special Olympics. Um, she's somebody that is a uh, very caring individual, very passionate, uh, very loving, a huge student advocate uh, for her kids and she's gonna be definitely missed but we're very excited for her and wish her well in the next chapter of her life. And then uh, last but not least, I just wanted to welcome Sophia. Great job tonight. So we look forward to hearing updates from you all year long. Thank you. Thanks. With that being said, I will turn it over to Mr. Barbieri. All right, good evening. Well, oh, that's very loud. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight and for allowing me this opportunity to share the information with you. Uh, the presentation is quite lengthy. I'm, I'm gonna you know, hit some of the highlights, uh, but a link to the presentation has been uh, provided for you in the agenda. So it's there, you can follow along at your leisure in case there's anything that you think you missed. Uh, and feel free to reach out to me in my office if there's anything um, you would like to discuss. So, so what is this, the strategic plan, action plan? So we use the word plan a lot. Um, well, uh, proper, uh, proper planning prevents poor performance, as a football coach once told me. So what you're seeing here tonight are the actionable steps to achieve the goals, or the, I should say the first chapter in achieving the goals that were brought forth by the community through the strategic planning process. So once every five years, we get together as a community and in a, a series of nights led by the uh, school boards, uh, the, the folks in town here, along with partnering with you know, uh, local business leaders, faith-based faith -based organizations, members of the uh, school district, we all work together to identify no, that's awesome. Thank you. And that's reminding us why we're here. People like you. That's the most excitement that uh, yeah, I know. I've heard in a long time for you. One of your presentations, Mr. Barbieri. Here's a plan. I promised your candy afterwards. So, no, it's awesome. Um, so, these goal statements came uh, as a result of the hard work by the folks during the strategic planning process. And then they turn the goals over to us and say, okay, what is the roadmap to get there? And that's what I want to present tonight. Those first steps in moving towards these goals. And we have five years to get there. Um, we're certainly not gonna take our time, uh, but when you see, you know, these are pretty pretty lofty um, things here. So I've had them up there for, for you to read. I just wanna highlight a couple of things, the, the key words there in orange, right? So the first goal is about creating an engaging environment. We know uh, from what we've observed here in town and, and then following tracking uh, data and trends around the state, 
and around the nation, there is a student engagement crisis in education right now. And that manifests itself in uh, chronic absenteeism. It manifests itself in low student achievement uh, test scores. It man manifests itself in student discipline issues. It manifests itself in a lot of negative ways. So we need to get kids excited about school. We need to get them plugged into the, the educational process um, and, and really excited and engaged about their learning. We were trying to move from extrinsic motivation, the so-called the carrot and the stick of the you know, grades and, and discipline and consequences. We're trying to move away from that and light the fire inside these young learners to get them super pumped to come to school every day and learn a bunch of cool stuff. So that's what goal number one is about. Goal number two goes hand in hand with that. Uh, you know, my office does a lot of the academics. We work uh, you know, side by side and hand in hand with the Office of Student Services. And they do a tremendous job in support, supporting uh, the so-called the whole child, the social and emotional needs, children's mental health, those types of things. And that's undeniably important, um, you know, now more than ever. So goal number two is focusing on the social emotional well-being of the children. Um, the next is a sense of place. We are grounded in this community and we have such amazing partnerships with local organizations from the Barnegat Police Department, local businesses, faith-based organizations um, to the communities that care, uh, you know, uh, uh, process through Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health. Um, so we, we have a great partnerships and we can't take those for granted. We wanna foster and nurture those relationships with the community. And all this, none of this could be possible without uh, the resources, human resources, fiscal resources, uh, these beautiful buildings that we're in. Um, so goal number four, that really the foundation uh, of, of what everything that builds off is a fiscally appealing and responsibly allocated budget to make these awesome things happen. So I'm just going to be going, again, there's a, there's a lot of information here. I just want to highlight some of the things to give you a sense of what you can expect um, coming forward. And again, this is just for this coming year. So in the area of goal number one, learning success, we broke down, we took that goal statement and uh, the um, strategic planning committee then further broke it down into different domains. Hey, what does this mean for students? What would this mean for faculty and staff? What would this mean from a family perspective, or a community perspective? And then we, we approached that again from these different angles and all trying to decide how can you reach children? How can you connect with kids? Because uh, if you talk to people who have been in education for a long time, they'll, they'll tell you some kids are difficult to reach. And sometimes if you can't reach them directly, you have to reach around them to plug into the things that are near and dear to their heart, whether it's a, you know, a sport they play, extracurricular activity, um, you know, a, a close a, a mentor, someone that they uh, you know, have connected with in the community and leverage those relationships um, to help students learn and grow. So you're going to see a bunch of that here throughout tonight. Again, I'm, I'm going to go through these at a very rapid pace just to highlight some of these things. You have a, a link in the agenda. You can peruse at your leisure. So to make school more engaging district-wide, we're trying to build out more of these academy-style experiences. ROTC, the SHIELD program. Um, in, the, in the back of the uh, media center here, we built a new recording arts lab, a state-of-the-art um, you know, equipment that the children can actually record professional grade audio quality so they can write their own songs and now that leads into the second one of project-based learning because now it's some not something oh, i'm just going to read this book and take a test no i'm actually building something i'm creating a song that i could post on soundcloud or on youtube it's a real live living thing that's what gets kids excited about coming to school they feel like it's relevant it's meaningful um, it, it, they're actually developing skills that are important to them or, or that they feel that they can use in life um, so it's those types of things that we want to build off of so specifically here at the high school, um, we were opening up um, uh, new pathways to get kids plugged into their learning. So you may have seen an email uh, go out uh, from my office today about the uh, Lincoln Parent Portal and the Lincoln Student Portal. We're expanding access so kids can go in and view um, their test scores and their assessment scores and, and help them understand, hey, you know, the school makes me take all these tests. Why? Well, here's why. Here's how we use that information to craft our programs and tailor them specifically to the needs. Um, the Catch a Tiger uh, program uh, to highlight students with high levels of growth on their benchmarks. Um, the lab experiences, we, we made a tremendous investment as a district, not just in uh, the recording lab here, but in the uh, B108 oh, like supercomputer lab, if you will, which is utilized by our AP computer science programs, our Girls Who Code program, um, our uh, uh, Cyber Patriot, club and of course our esports team our, our state champion 
uh, esports team all get to use that that amazing space. Um, it's those types of things uh, that really make students excited to come to school and they feel like they have a place for them and, and something meaningful and cool to do. Um, for the faculty and the staff, giving the teachers more uh, say in how they would like to see decisions made. You know, teachers have a lot of great ideas and that's sort of an untapped resource where they felt like maybe they haven't been heard as much in sharing those ideas. Um, and so we've developed a, a, a way of working with them where if they're gonna bring forth ideas, we'll say, hey, great, you wanna do such and such a thing? Here's the roadblocks or obstacles that I see to making that happen. Let's partner together and work through our ideas together to overcome them. Let's find a way to get to yes together. And that type of partnership both engenders good ideas that, that, you know, the many heads are better than one mentality, but also boosts the, the climate and the culture here in this building and around the district when people feel like, wow, that idea that came from me. And now the district's heard me and it's going gonna, it's gonna to implement that. So I think those types of things go a long way. Um, and recognizing teachers, recognizing teachers for their growth. You know, same with the Upstanders Awards. We have um, the Superintendent's Inspire Awards at the end of the year. And we're always looking for ways, whether it's just stopping by a teacher's room uh, at the, the winter benchmark and say, hey, you're, you're the fourth grade teacher with the, with the biggest gains in reading. You know, we just wanted to all show up with a you know, bouquet of flowers and take a picture with you and just, just you know, give you a, a feel good moment in front of your class and, and you know, give the big uh, hurrah to, to recognize your accomplishment. Those things go a long way. Um, you may have seen as uh, we've been talking about the awesome work that Kim Burke does uh, to promote these things that are happening in the district. So more social media posts uh, are going out there to make the, uh, folks in the community aware of all the awesome things that are that are happening on a daily basis. Um, uh, more community plugging in more community events. We've gotten great feedback about the trunk or treat. Um, you know this this district is such a has so many beautiful facilities. We really should be the hub of this community. There's no reason why we can't be. So opening up the schools for more of those types of opportunities. Uh, a career week is something that came up. You'll see that in a number of, uh, uh, of the uh, school plans, uh, particularly at Brackman and Barnegat High School, of helping ki kids raise awareness, getting them plugged into school of like, well, what do I need to learn this? Oh, well, here's how learning such and such a skill or learning you know, these things today, here's how that might apply in, in, in jobs or in opportunities that you never even thought about or never even knew existed. Um, you know, those types of things will get kids interested. Um, some similar things at, at Brackman, uh, student council, goal recognition program, someone to like the catch a tiger type plan where we're, uh, you know, highlighting uh, the, the, the accomplishments of, of, the, uh, of the children and, and celebrating the teachers, letting them know that their efforts are noticed and appreciated. Um, open lines of communication among all levels, that's something that we're working on. You know, it's, it's been a, a humbling lesson for me is sometimes we feel like we're communicating a lot, but it doesn't matter what we feel like if we're doing it enough, it matters what's being heard. And if folks are feeling like they're not hearing what we're saying, then we got to step it up in, in, the, in the volume of communications, the, the style of communications. Um, and hopefully you're going to be seeing more of that this year as more information is, is flowing out from the district. Uh, again, career day, I, I, I talked about inviting community groups to participate. There's a number of folks in town that have amazing stories to tell and have had amazing skill sets. You know, we've definitely had folks like that in from time to time, um, you know, but there's always opportunity uh, for more. All right, at Horbelt, um, we have some really cool programs. Uh, going on. Uh, uh, Dr. Saxon is leading the charge with a, uh, a writing initiative, okay, throughout his building um, that, you know, is going to target to uh, to make students kind of overcome their fear of writing, if you will. And we've just embarked on a uh, climate change project with Rutgers University. We're going to be, be meeting with them next week to help uh, students raise awareness about how choices that they make can contribute to climate change or actually help, you know, fight against climate change. So that's something we're excited about. And it's those types of real life opportunities when someone comes in from Rutgers University and the kids get that sense of, yeah, I mean, I've heard that, but now I'm actually sitting here talking to a member of the faculty. It kind of like makes it come alive for them a little bit more. Um, empowering staff to take those leadership roles. Uh, La Fiera, if anyone was at, uh, at Horbelt last year for that, was an amazing celebration of Spanish culture. 
Um, and and uh, Ms. Uh, Flores did a, an incredible job bringing in uh, you know, flamenco dancers and all, all great ways of, of experiencing that Spanish culture and those types of things, those real life experiences that I think mean a lot to kids. That's what they're gonna remember. You know, the science fair, those, you know, sometimes in education, what's old is, is new again. And, and an old school science fair was a great way, you know, to get kids excited about learning, um, to bring folks in and see all the cool things that are happening in the school. So things like that can actually really go a long way. Um, so again, yeah, science fair, hobby day, music and drama events, um, building those links with the community, uh, strategic, uh, hello, sorry, partnerships with strategic partners like Mirage, Heritage Point, Pheasant Run, all those types of things. Opportunities for our students to go out, our student um, artists to go and or musicians to perform or to share their talents, uh, you know, with folks in the community. Those, those types of things are, are really meaningful and they go a long way. Uh, so to attack student uh, 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 academic deficiencies, which we know has been a huge um, issue coming out of uh, the past couple of years, Donahue's got some great plans. It's really important to remediate gaps uh, at the lowest level because those gaps, unfortunately, are, are pernicious and persistent, and they only get bigger and worse over time. So Donahue's doing a great job of really making sure by the, by the time kids graduate, if you will, from, from that three, four band, you know, they have a strong foundation for reading. You'll hear us many, many times that, you know, at first you learn to read because then you read to learn. So if a child is not really set up for success by the time they're finishing fourth grade, they're at a, a perennial disadvantage for the remainder of their academic career. So that's why it's a huge uh, emphasis in the Donahue School um, to, because readers are leaders, right? Um, and uh, so Battle of the Books, that's, that's a big uh, thing. Again, what's old is new, drop everything and read if you remember that. You know, um, I wanna uh, give a shout out to Mrs. Santola and her team. She did a fantastic job going into the data to understand more uh, uh, at a more complex level where and how and why students were struggling. And what we found is uh, as you drill down on the question types, they were struggling with some of the multi-select, the drag and drop, some of the tech enhanced questions, and they could be successful in demonstrating the same skill, maybe on pencil and paper, they were successful, but they were struggling a little bit with the computer. So it wasn't the skill that they were, that they, you know, uh, it looked like they weren't learning the skill, you know, based on the, the computer tests, but we were able to ascertain it was actually a function of their, you know, technology you know, uh, abilities that, that was limiting them. So it's things like that that allow us to be more efficacious uh, as educators. So of course, we're always analyzing uh, data, that's, that's no uh, shock. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we're constantly trying to leverage the resources we have more efficiently. You know, you don't get more hours in the day. So it's only about how teachers can use that time, the, the limited time that they have with kids every day. How can they use that more effectively and more efficiently? Um, and it's about listening too, meeting with the PTA, uh, you know, building in those types of pieces uh, where, again, kids understand that. Yes, academics are important, but as I said in the beginning, it's also the social emotional piece. Um, things like SEL, that's at the social emotional learning, you'll see that, character education. So uh, they really do go hand in hand as we've, as we've been saying all along. Uh, the Collins crew, you know, empowering the uh, folks at Collins to again, take that leadership role. There's been some great ideas coming out of uh, both the, the new administration there at Collins and, and the staff there. Um, teachers came in, of their own accord, of their own will, over the summer to paint. Um, the building looks amazing if you've been in there. It's got such a fresh, you know, look and feel. Um, and, and and that was a teacher-led initiative. So I think it's things like that that really go a long way for when you talk about school pride and, and building a place where kids want to be. Um, it, those types of things go a long way. A school-wide behavior plan to address some of those concerns that we talked about earlier. You know, those are, those are in place. Um, Data-driven PD. Being able to drill down, hey, listen, we know you only get one faculty meeting a month. Let's make it count. We're not just here to waste teachers' time. We're not here just to, oh, I'm just going to talk to you about whatever, whatever. We've all seen that coffee cup that said, you know, I survived a meeting that could have been an email, right? So instead, let's make those, let's make those meetings meaningful. Let's make them dialogues. It's not just a one-way transmission of information. You can do that over an email. Instead, we're, we're making data-driven PD so we can identify the teacher's needs and have a, a way to help them in a responsive uh, manner. 
uh, teacher-led events in conjunction with the PTA, partnership with broadcast journalism class. So uh, again, all the cool technology that we've been talking about, uh, you know, in this building, because it shares a campus uh, with Donahue, it has a tremendous opportunity for, for high school kids to, you know, do projects with the younger ones. And if you ever see, you know, like a third grader interacting with like a high school senior, they look like starstruck. They, you know, when the, when the big kids come in, you know, the, the little kids are like, wow. You know, it's just a really cool, um, and then gives them that opportunity. They, they see, hey, one day I'm going to be a bangle. Like, no offense, mates, don't go to mates. No offense, PAA, don't go to PAA. Like, stay Barnegat. Come to Barnegat High School. Like, this is, this is the message that we want to be sending. There's amazing things happening here uh, for our kids, and we want the, we want the little ones to, to know that from an early, an early era. So speaking of our little ones, the littlest ones uh, at uh, Dunphy, our, our baby dragons, um, positive student recognition program. Those kids, again, as we've seen, they are the absolute cutest. And, and that foundation of what we've been able to build at the Dunphy School has just been instrumental for setting the entire district up uh, for success. So Dunphy, like everyone uh, jokes, is like the happiest place on earth. Um, instead of uh, Disneyland, it's gonna be Dunphy land. Um, but still, Ms. Froelich has decided, you know what, there's, there's always a way to uh, you know, go more, uh, go big. And so positive staff recognition, staff taking a leadership role, um, you know, it's those types of things that she's, she uh, obviously recognizes that's part of what makes that, that Dumpy vibe so special. So uh, having a collaborative staff, having the principal being able to meet with teacher teams every uh, trimester, listening to their ideas, like we said at the, at the beginning, and then implementing those ideas so teachers feel like, hey, this is, this is my home too. This is my sort of home away from home. You know, we all spend more of our waking hours at work than anywhere else, right? This, when we talk about a Barnegat family, that this is really what that means. So uh, pre-K parent university, fun family events. You know, we've had a, a number of uh, cool uh, programs and stuff going on, not just at Dunphy, but around the district. Um, and those are the types of things that, again, we really want to make this the, the, the district, the hub of our community, um, because we have so much to offer here. So now moving into goal two, the social and emotional wellness. Uh, these are some of the main ideas here. Uh, I'll let you, let you read them, but really a lot of it is about connecting students with the support that they need. There's so many supports out there through the school, through uh, local um, and state and national organizations, through um, you know, our work with the Barnegat CTC. There's so many things out there uh, it's about connecting the kids who need that support with the various types of support that we have. Um, so that's what this goal is really about. The district has a robust mental health action plan. So I'll, I'll encourage you to uh, click on that. Um, and you can, you can take a look at, at, um, at, at that information. But just to kind of give a quick overview here as you're reading the slide behind me. So as you may recall, um, every, I think it's three years, the um, uh, Communities of Care process puts out that survey to students in grades six to 12 um, to understand the risk factors and the protective factors in this community. That information is it's an anonymous survey, but when you aggregate the data, it gives very clear trends about what are the biggest risk factors in this community um, and what are the protective factors to address that particular risk. So in some communities, it might be um, you know, substance abuse, or in one community, it might be gang violence, or in one community, it might be you know, whatever, any, any risk that you can think of. Um, what we found through our survey is that one of the major risks that students in Barnegat are facing is uh, depressive symptoms. Now, uh, you know, frankly, coming out of uh, the public health emergency that we've had, the pandemic for the past couple of years, this is a very well, uh, unfortunately, very well you know, documented trend uh, much wider and larger, you know, uh, than, than just in our community here. And there's children all over the country that are facing, you know, depressive symptoms, anxiety, things of that nature. So mental health is definitely on the forefront. And again, that, that student engagement and commitment to school um, through the state program, students tackling attendance, healthy homes program, the strengthening families program. That's a fantastic program uh, that we've been running in Barnegat for a while. It's now been expanded. Um, so a lot of really good stuff uh, happening here. And getting those kids plugged into things, again, having those uh, students taking ownership of their own place of learning, building that intrinsic motivation. That's what it's really all about. That's what makes kids excited 
to come to school every day. That's what makes kids proud to be a Bengal. Um, so that's, that's exactly what we want to foster. And then addressing, um, you know, quite frankly, we know that there have been behaviors, uh, you know, uh, last year was something that, you know, again, coming out of the uh, coming out of uh, the pandemic and, and sort of re-socializing kids back into a school environment, you know, that brought a whole tremendous number of challenges. This year, thankfully, the behaviors have been a lot better at the start of school. We're able to, you know, put some things in place to start the year strong with that. And one of them is this PBSIS, so you might, you might see that acronym, Positive Behavior Support in Schools. So that is a school-wide system. It's a coherent strategy for incentivizing and rewarding positive behaviors. And it's nothing, uh, it's a very fancy name for the idea of you catch the kids being good and you catch them being good, you reward them for that. Hey, I saw that kindness that you did, you know, that was really nice of you. The, the, you know, the girl in front of you dropped her milk in the cafeteria and you stopped and helped her pick it up. That was really cool. Let me recognize you for that. That goes a long way. That's what build, builds a winning culture. And if anyone here follows sports and if you're, you know, I'm going to guess most of us do, right? You'll notice that whatever sport you want to pick, uh, there are some teams, some franchises that build a culture of winning, where it seems like it doesn't matter who's on the roster from year to year. It doesn't matter who the coach is. Somehow that team just wins and winners find a way to win. Winning is a, a it's, winning is an expectation level. Winning is a, is a culture. It's the way we do things here. And we are building that winning culture, you know, uh, through, through programs such as this. Um, principal advisory committees, again, we're talking about, uh, you know, plugging into the teachers, getting them, uh, you know, to share their good ideas, and, and how, again, as, you, as I said numerous times, you know, helping those ideas come to life so that the teachers really do feel valued, or they feel as valued as, as we actually, you know, do value them, which is a tremendous amount because the teachers, the counselors, the child study team, our related service providers, our, uh, our bus drivers, our aides, our paras, all these playground cafeteria aides, they make this place run. We couldn't do it without any of those uh, groups. We, we appreciate them all. Um, what are some other things we're working on? Okay, so resource directory, again, uh, you know, sharing all the uh, um, opportunities that we have for kids to get involved, the supports and services that are out there, making sure people know about those things. That bleeds into our next topic, which is the community partnerships and making sure we are, uh, you know, really tying into uh, every aspect of the community. So a color-coded district calendar, okay, um, strengthening the uh, partnerships with the senior communities. Uh, we have an amazing program for our, uh, some of our learners with special needs called CBI and SLE. So that's community-based instruction slash structured learning experiences where they get to go out and interact in, a, in an actual place of business and learn how to, hey, how do, how do I behave properly when I'm at the grocery store? What, how, do I, how do I do this? How do I, you know, the things that, um, you know, typically developing uh, folks take for granted, you know, we've got to teach some of our learners with special needs. And then the, um, so that's the CBI, community-based instruction, and the structured learning experience is actually, hey, not just I want to be a, a patron at Planet Fitness, but what would it be like for me to work at Planet Fitness? Um, and, and they get that real life type work experience. And we've been very excited, very fortunate. You've probably heard Mr. Junker um, speak to this and Mr. Enzo, that we've had a number of students come up through this program and then find jobs, gain, become gainfully employed here in town. So that's amazing. These, these are kids that you know, otherwise may not have experiences like that, may not have opportunities like that, you know, if we, unless we had such an awesome program. So that's a big shout out uh, for those folks. So uh, the district calendar I mentioned, uh, a senior community liaison. We know that a, a, a large percentage of the folks who live in Barnegat are in uh, you know, senior communities. And we think that's awesome. We need for them to uh, really feel and, and understand how important the schools are, even if they don't necessarily have school-age children themselves. So they recognize what an important part of this community is and it becomes relevant and meaningful you know, for them. Uh, there's the uh, CBI and SLE I, I talked about. I think we have uh, partnerships with over 20-something different businesses in town. I forget the exact number, but it's growing every month. We'll see them on the board agenda, um, and, and they've done a fantastic job with that. Uh, okay, so local communication. Again, we're always looking for you know ways to communicate, Twitter, social media, the school website, email blasts, things of that nature. Um, so we're always trying to get the word out. And then last, and certainly not least, as I, as I said at the beginning, none of this could happen without the money. 
So managing those district resources is, is an incredible um, you know, task uh, and, and all the things that go, the moving parts that go into that. And then making sure we're getting return on that investment. So what are, those, what are some of the projects that we do to make sure we get return on that investment? Well, you've heard a lot about the Edwards building and the uh, situation you know, with that. And uh, it's a huge point of pride if you were here last spring, I think it may have been May or June, we actually had a presentation from one of the classes here at the high school with a proposal for how to utilize the space in that, uh, you know, an outdoor amphitheater. So I think it's amazing when we talk about project-based learning and, and making the, you know, the curriculum come alive, that's a prime example of the kids are actually designing, you know, something that, that, will, that will come to life and, and something in place that they can, they can use. Um, the HVAC upgrades, you know, this, this um, district has some, some very new buildings. Uh, it's got some aging buildings and it's got buildings with HVAC challenges. So Mr. Brandon in his office has uh, done quite frankly, a fantastic job in managing all those different projects. You've seen the solar arrays go up. You've heard about the energy savings improvement plans, um, numerous HVAC upgrades, things of that nature. And uh, not of course to mention the um, safety and security features. Obviously, in public, we can't really talk about and highlight the specific things that are done, uh, but we can say that a number of uh, upgrades were made uh, to security in this district um, because obviously safety is our, is our first priority. So there's some of the things that we are allowed to share and things that we've done, uh, you know, security cameras, uh, walkie talkies, things of that nature, uh, improving communication, the, the eyes and ears uh, of the district. So, you know, it is quite lengthy. That, that's basically just an overview of, of the things that we're doing this year alone, that you can expect more awesome stuff to come along every year. Um, but kind of in the interest of time, I think I'll leave it there. And if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to my office. All right, thank you very much. Great job, thank you, Mr. Barbieri. And I'll turn it back to you, Mr. O'Brien. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Barbieri. Uh, so quickly, I would like to acknowledge we received a letter uh, last week that the Barnegat Township School Board has been uh, certified in, in order in, for board certification from the NJSBA, uh, the Board Member Academy. So this is a award that will be presented to our board in the October County meeting. All board members, uh, BA and superintendent are invited to attend that award ceremony. Um, this is the first time our board has achieved the certification. Uh, and I'd like to thank the board for their commitment to excellence and um, continuous improvement. And uh, I hope it proves to the public this board's commitment to professionalism and that continuous improvement. Uh, the beginning of the school year has gone, gone pretty well. Uh, as, as always, there's challenges in the beginning of the year and the staff is looking for ways to make things more effective and convenient. Uh, so those changes will roll out as the, uh, as the opportunities present themselves. This week, we also have the 22-23 Citizens Advisory Committee kicking off. Um, so that is on Thursday evening, the first meeting. This year's format will look a little different than previous iterations. So we're gonna focus each of the first four sessions on the uh, strategic plan goals. So we'll spend a session talking about the strategic plan goal, um, get feedback on that. The next session would be on the uh, next strategic plan. And then we circle back to those strategic plan goals to you know, find improvements and see what actions we're taking. Uh, so we still are taking members if people would like to join the Citizen Advisory Committee. And then lastly, uh, it was mentioned during Committee of the Whole, the health and PE curriculum. Uh, the board delayed the vote based on the uh, feedback from board members being unclear and vague for the information presented. So we wanted to make sure all members had the information they required. Um, and as discussed, the draft curriculum will be sent out to the parents and guardian community. Uh, we will then host a third information session for folks to provide feedback. And hopefully again, that makes things more clear and people are able to understand what we're trying to accomplish. And as always, I want to make clear the district will make the curriculum, which is acceptable to the community while meeting the requirements of the student learning standards. Uh, and then currently, it's just as an update, about 11% of the student population has opted out. That's 374 students have opted out so far. That is uh, my president's remarks. Thank you. Um, can I please have a motion to enter public session? So moved. Second. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. We are in public session. Um, 
Barnegat Township Board of Education appreciates and welcomes public comment, advice, and suggestions, especially when it's intended to assist the Board of Education. Please feel free to speak to the board during the public session. Comments and discussion will be limited to one five-minute period per individual unless requested by the chairperson to continue on a point of clarification. Public comment at special, at special meetings of the board shall be related to the call of the meeting in accordance with the Board of Education policy. Each participant must be recognized by the presiding officer and must preface their comments by an announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if appropriate. Your anticipated courtesy to the members of the public and board is appreciated. And with that, the floor is open. Okay, anybody online, uh, please raise your hand. Um, we do have somebody online, uh, Ms. Kava, you please comment. I only put my hand down first. Um, I just wanted to come tonight to express my support yeah. for the. Um, can, can we have her state her name? Oh, and... sorry, you did say that. Janine Kava, Ten Windward Drive, Barnegat. Um, I don't have him on here with any affiliations. Um, I wanted to express my support for the the state's new health education curriculum and just ask. Um, what sort of stands in the way and what's the plan for sort of coming into line with adopting the new um, curriculum so that our students are not left behind um, in that um, part of their learning um, since most of the state is going to be adopting that curriculum and we want them to um, be learning the same thing that the the public health professionals and you know um, data informed um, you know, we, we want to make sure that our kids are, are um, not feeling left behind. I have an eighth grader in the district and we have been reading the newspaper articles, um, the local paper and also the state news about it. And, um, you know, we try not to tell our kids what to think, but, you know, on his own sort of expressed, like, not wanting to not be getting the same education that most of the other folks um, his age would be. Um, so what's this, the path to, to getting in line there? Sure. So. Um... At the previous meeting, we, we tabled the vote for that particular curriculum. We had a few board members that were not clear on the problems. There was uh, mentions of vagueness. So we wanted to offer the opportunity for the community to gather more information and provide feedback. So as was stated in the committee of the whole, the expectation, unless there's some dramatic changes needed to the curriculum, uh, that we would be voting on that curriculum in the October meeting, so next month. It really is just to be able to present the opportunity to give people the actual information rather than uh, hearsay. That's always good. Okay, thanks. Anybody else online? Anybody in the audience? Okay. Have a motion to end public session, please. So moved. Second. All right, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Amante? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Floor is closed. All right. Uh, next up, can I please have a motion for Finance B&G Committee uh, motions, one through nine? So I move. Second. Any further discussion on that? finance items? All right. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Motions carry. Okay. Uh, next up, can I please have a motion for the Education Committee items one through seven? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion on that? All right. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, motions carry. And section 15 is for information purposes only. Uh, section 16, governance committee motions one through six. Can I please have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, uh, any further <laughs> discussion on governance items? Just wanna make sure we have the inclusion of the uh, resignation. Yep. Yeah, that's um, it. item number six. Okay, yep. Roger that. Item number six. I made the, the corrections on the agenda posted online as well. So, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Imonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. 
right? Motion's carried. Okay. And uh, next up, can I please have a motion for personnel committee items one through 48? So moved. Second. All right. Any further discussion on the personnel items? All right. Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Imonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Motions carry. Okay, and the next item is for information purposes only. Uh, so next, can I have a motion to adjourn into executive session, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Imonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we're in executive at 710. Folks online will be back shortly. Earn so executive session. Right. Second. I thought it was the actual second. All right. Uh, Ms. Cherney. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? No, I'm sorry, he's not here. Ms. Tarnowski? Yeah. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we're adjourned executive at 8.06. Okay, and there is no HIB report this month because there was no HIBs, so uh, just have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All right. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Cherney? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Ms. Tarnowski? Yes. And Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we are adjourned at 8.07.